I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's like a red dot on my chest from where this snowball light is. I wonder if you could turn that off. All right, I know I said I wouldn't have a tutorial this week, but you know what? I'm gonna put out a tutorial this week. I'm gonna do it because you know what? I'm gonna fight through the pain. And I figured out a way to record this before I got my wisdom teeth out. Anyways, hey guys, this is JRP77 from JG and Game. I'm trying to get something a little bit different because I kind of like just standing in front of the camera and talking instead of sitting down in my chair like I always do. So I'm gonna try standing up from now on. Today, we are talking about the remesh modifier in Blender. Basically what the remesh modifier allows you to do is to take a mesh and put it into the modifier and then out comes this new mesh where the faces are made out of only quadrilaterals. Now this can be very helpful as far as like retopologizing and making your mesh a little bit more efficient and optimized. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. So I've already got Blender open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click outside of this box and I'm going to hit X to delete this object. And I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to add a cone. And I'm just going to move this cone up to where it sits kind of on top of the axes. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the right sidebar. We're going to click on the wrench and we're going to go add modifier remesh. So you'll notice immediately that the object doesn't look like it used to. It looks a little bit more jagged and we can actually turn off the modifier and see these changes in real time by clicking on the eye icon in the right sidebar. So let's just go ahead and let's talk about the different options that we have. The first option we have is mode. And this is going to be the style of smoothing that is added to the mesh. We have three different options here. We have blocks, we have smooth and we have sharp. Now blocks is going to be no smoothing whatsoever. It's a little bit hard to describe, but you know like building a Lego set and how it's like all blocky and stuff, that's kind of what blocks looks like. I mean, hence the name. The second one is smooth. It's gonna allow you to make your mesh look a little bit more smooth and it's just gonna make it not look like a Lego model, like the blocks option. And the last mode we have is sharp. Now what this is going to do is it's going to act like the smooth one did, but it's gonna try to preserve all the sharp edges and corners on the mesh. I'm like 99% sure you don't have to do that. I know you can, but I'm pretty sure that the modifier will actually do it procedurally for you. But if I'm completely wrong, let me know in the comments down below. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go onto the computer and we're gonna start playing around with these different modes. So let's just play around a bit with the different modes. First of all, we've got sharp right now and you can see how jagged it is. And let's just go ahead and let's switch the mode over to smooth. And you notice that this changes the model a lot. It makes it look more like the cone and less like a jagged structure. And also overall, it just makes it look more like the original shape. And we can see this again by turning the modifier on and off by clicking on the eye icon. It looks very similar to the original shape. Now let's go to the final mode blocks. So we're gonna click on this and you'll notice that it looks immediately like a Lego set. That's basically the easiest way to describe it. It's not very smooth at all, but it does look like the original shape, which is kind of cool. So I guess this could kind of be cool if you're trying to make some kind of a Lego video and you wanted to have a model in the background. Well, you could use the remesh modifier and change all of your shapes into Lego models, essentially, just using this one modifier. The next option we have is Octree Depth. Now, what this is going to allow us to do is to more accurately set the resolution of how this modifier is going to act. So the lower the Octree Depth, the larger the faces are going to be and the less detailed the model is actually gonna be. The higher the Octree value, the smaller the quadrilaterals are gonna be and the more detailed it will be. So like the last time, let's just hop on Blender, man, let's play around with it a bit. So because we're gonna be playing around with Octree Depth, I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to Smooth just so that we can see this a little bit better. So currently the Octree Depth is on four. So let's just go ahead and double it and bump it up to eight. And you'll notice that just increases the resolution by so much that it just looks like it, the model originally did. And we can go ahead and click on the eye and you can see it's basically the exact same thing. It's also slowed down my application a ton. And that's another thing to note that the higher the octree depth, the harder it is going to be on your PC. So we've gone up, but let's see about going down. So let's go down to like two. So I'm going to go over to octree depth and I'm just going to click and change it to two. And wow, that looks a ton different. So we can tell that it's kind of in like a cone shape, but it doesn't look at all like the cone. And we can look at this for four and after by clicking on the eye right here. It's changed a lot. So let's just bump it up to three. So if I click on this arrow right here to move it up to three, you'll notice that it looks a whole lot more like the actual shape. So that's basically Octree Depth. I'm just gonna set it back to four. And now let's just go on to the next option. The third option we have is scale. Now what this is going to do is also allow us to adjust the resolution by determining how big the impact is on the mesh. So the lower the value Values, the lower the resolution. The higher the scale, the higher the resolution. It's pretty straightforward. So I can try to explain this as best I can, but I think it's always easier just to head on over to the computer and let's try to figure out how this thing works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change the scale down to like 0.5. 
Now you'll notice that all the quadrilaterals that make up the mesh look bigger than they did beforehand. So we can go ahead and change this number again and change this down to like 0.25. And now you can see that all the quadrilaterals are very big and they take up a large portion on the mesh. And we take this all the way down to 0.1 just to see what it looks like. It's just a square because it has taken it down so far that it has turned it from a cone into six vertices. So I'm gonna change this back to 0.5 just because I thought that one looked the coolest. And then I'm just gonna show you that this also looks different in sharp mode as well in block mode because this changes the effect that the model has. The next option we have is smooth shading. Now what this is going to allow us to do is to smooth out our model so that it looks a bit more like realistic and not as blocky. So if you use Blender before, you notice that there's two different rendering types. There's smooth shading and there's flat shading. Most of the time when I model, I use flat shading because most of the time I'm making very simple things. And I'm also using low vertice counts, so it doesn't make sense for it to be in smooth mode. Where on the left toolbar, you have a mode that says smooth and flat, and you can actually click smooth and it will smooth out your object. Now, I've only seen this truly work when you've had a higher vertice count. So for me, this doesn't apply as much, but if you're like a sculptor or something, being in that smooth mode is probably pretty crucial. And the smooth shading option does the exact same thing just through the modifier. So as soon as we check the box, our mod model will be smooth and as soon as we deselect the box it will be more flat again and you'll be able to see all the individual vertices now from my personal experience i don't use smooth shading all of that often so if i click it you'll notice that it makes it really low resolution i don't know it just looks poorly done when you do this now obviously if you add more vertices it looks a whole lot better than it does right now but just from looking at it on first glance it just looks really low resolution and this could be really cool in a level of detail setup where when you're right next to the object the object is really high quality but as soon as you start getting farther and farther away from the object, the object looks like it is losing quality, but that's just so that you can save resources for your actual game. So that's basically all that option is. It's just a checkbox, and when you uncheck it, it makes it not smooth. When you check it, it makes it smooth. Now let's go on to the final one, and that is remove disconnected pieces. And the final option is remove disconnected pieces. Now this is a very useful option if you have a more complex mesh than what we have. But because I'm not that skilled of a modeler, we just have a cone, and there's actually no pieces that are getting broken off. So I'm not going to be showing this one in a demo, but I'm going to try to explain this as best I can with work because it is a little bit difficult. Basically what it does is it removes the pieces that could have gotten screwed up by the modifier. So let's say you had a more complicated mesh and you had a little small tangent, let's say it was like the tail of an animal or whatever, and you were trying to remesh the object using the modifier, then maybe that tail gets disconnected or whatever, and then it just messes everything up. So by clicking the remove disconnected pieces box and by adjusting the threshold, you can change how much of those pieces are actually deleted and how much of them are actually actually say honestly that's the easiest way to explain it i wish i could show you guys but i just quite frankly don't have a model that i could find that would work with this but other than that that's the remesh modifier it's a really helpful tool for making your models either more detailed or less detailed and overall it's just a really easy modifier to use so thanks for watching guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video if this video sucked then you know what to do but if it didn't drop a like and don't forget to subscribe for more content don't forget to check out our website social media and merge as well as our community discord server all those links will be in the description below Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys next time.